Welcome back, everyone. It is the beginning of the end. This week was the world premiere of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. It's the long-anticipated conclusion of the Skywalker saga. The story comes to an end. The franchise has spanned four decades and over nine episodes. It also has become a worldwide phenomenon with millions of fans, and a few of them right here in this building. All right, in a career spanning more than 50 years, Sally Field now adds Kennedy Center honoree to an already long list of accolades that includes two Oscars, three Emmys, and two Golden Globes. Field has starred in 35 movies, including Hollywood classics like Still Magnolias, Mrs. Doubtfire, and Forrest Gump. Gail King sat down with Field to talk about her incredible career. You talk about being a painfully shy little girl. Mm -hmm. So I would think that acting would be the hardest thing for you to do. It's an odd dichotomy. I was a colorful little character in there, but I wasn't allowed to be it. And my grandmother would say to me, if I got angry, she would say, don't be ugly. And she even God had... God don't like ugly. Uh, God don't like ugly girls. So the stage, when I first got to a stage, something cleared and I could be me. Born Sally Margaret Feel, she was only 12 years old when performing in a school production planted the seed for a dream. Raised by working class actors in Los Angeles, show business ran in the family, but it's a childhood that Field has called complicated. In her 2018 memoir, she described her stepfather sexually abusing her when she was a little girl. It has, you know, certainly haunted me, guided me throughout my life, uh, my childhood, um, mm -hmm. with my beloved, complicated mother and my stepfather. And I think uh, a kind of traumatic childhood, you are sorting it out your whole life long. Oh, boy. But an escape to those troubles at home came along the summer after she graduated high school when Theo landed her big break as the all-American sweetheart, Gidget. You see before you me, Gidget. Gidget was a character inside of me that I had already perfected to hide behind. You know, I knew how to be that kind of bubbly because I could keep all the other parts of me carefully hidden. And then we go from Gidget to the Flying Nun, which surprised me to read that you didn't even want that part in the beginning. No. Or the end. <laughs> or the middle. The wind lifts me up like this, you see. Now I can go down like this and I go off that way. I, I go didn't like want to be a nun. I wanted to find my own madness and craziness and sexuality. But she was a character. Man. She was a jerk. You know, huh? She was a mindless idiot. There was nothing real to play. And you brought it, you said that at the time. You were that outspoken at the time. I was learning to be. I was being pushed to finally have to say no. You're coming mighty close to blasphemy, Norma. I've come here and said I sinned and I done wrong and I'm sorry and I ask for God to forgive me. You say Norma Ray was the first time that you were a star of a movie. Mm -hmm. Was Norma Ray life changing for you, a game changer for you? It certainly changed who I was in the industry and it in some ways was a tiny example. This one woman standing up for her dignity was about me standing up for my own dignity. I had worked so hard to learn how to act, to get to those roles, to fight for them in many cases, tooth and nail. Her hard work paid off. And the winner is Sally Field. Winning Field her first Oscar. And only five years later... Now you listen to me. Another critically acclaimed performance in Places in the Heart... And the winner is Sally Field in Places in the Heart... ...earned her a second Academy Award. The first time I didn't feel it, but this time I feel it. And I can't deny the fact that you like me right now. You like me. I always thought you said, you like me, you really like me. Mm -mm. That's not what you said. No. No. I got up there and all of a sudden this light that was a new thing, the light started flashing in my face to get off, get off, get off, get off. And I just went to the truth. And that was that I had worked so hard. I had such an unorthodox career. And right now I cannot deny the fact yes. that you like me. Yes. It means that the work worked. Her life in the spotlight extended beyond work when she began a high-profile relationship with Burt Reynolds. <laughs> You've written about 
the two of you together. It was loving and caring, but it was also confusing and complicated. Mm -hmm. My relationship with, with Bert was extremely complicated. Yeah. It was just as complicated as my relationship with my stepfather. I couldn't see him, really, because I kept hearing my past, mm -hmm. uh, except he kept stepping right into the old footsteps um, that were left behind. Of your stepfather. Yeah. So how did you heal Sally? How do you ever know if you're healed? I, I don't know. But I do know this. I don't have a relationship with anyone. And I Would think, you like to? I, I don't know. I distrust. I think that's probably the area of my life that I cannot uh, heal. You distrust men? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And I distrust that I can remain myself. Has acting been therapeutic for you? Oh, acting is, has healed me in a, in a lot of ways. Each time it asked me to find something inside myself, I didn't want to know. Oh God, I want to know why, why? And to own those pieces of myself is freeing. Well, I happen to believe you make your own destiny with what God gave you. When you reflect on your career, what are you most proud of? I guess, in reality, what I'm most proud of is that I'm still here, is that I still deeply, profoundly care that I'm an actor. I am so lucky to be able to do something I love. Jacob is cooking up a storm next on Midmorning. We'll be right back. Cooking up a storm is brought to you by Kroger. Fresh food, low prices. All right, we're back. We're in the kitchen. Jacob is here with something hearty and hot. Uh, you're cooking up a storm, and it's a uh, meatball soup. Huh? It is. I think this is our last week of soup that we've got for mm -hmm. the run there. So I went with the meatball soup because I love a good meatball. And oh, what better way to enjoy it than in a nice soup that you can do lots of different things with, right? Mm -hmm. This is going to feel like a real comfort food here. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I'm using frozen meatballs. But okay. if you've got a good recipe for frozen meatballs, you can use that. In fact, we actually made meatballs. I'm going to say that was in the springtime. Mm -hmm. I had a really great recipe for that. And that recipe will be on. Online and linked, of course, to the recipe when it's posted. All so, right, we did a little uh, shortcut today. That's a little it. shortcut, okay. yeah. You know, it's a little, you know, winter. You just want to sleep in and snuggle in. Uh, down, so throw it in, forget about it. Okay. Yeah. So what I've done first is I've chopped up some carrots. I just took some whole carrots and sliced them and put a layer on the bottom. Gotcha. And I have that on top of my crock pot layer. That look is good. going to keep the meatballs from burning to the bottom. Okay. Sometimes it can get a little hot. And I've got uh, about 30 to 40 meatballs that are frozen mm -hmm. here. And I'm just going to let them slide on in. They're humongous. They are. They're the good When I too. walked in initially and I saw this bowl, I was like, oh, he made sausage balls. Yeah, right? <laughs> no. They kind of look that way. You they can pick do. whatever you want. Of course, right. you like turkey meatballs. I do like turkey meatballs. So if meatballs. you want to do that, this mm -hmm. is an Italian one that I found at Kroger in the freezer aisle. Okay. They've got lots of choices at Kroger. Great place to go and get them. Okay. So we got that there. Now we're going to start with this bowl here and uh, mix up our sauce, our broth to mm -hmm. go with that. I'm going to use a beef stock. Uh, you can use a beef broth or a beef stock. I just went okay. with the stock because uh, I like the flavor a little bit better. And this one had no sodium added. I'm all about Cutting that sodium. salt, yeah. Yeah, keeping the salt down because you can add, but you can't take away right. when it comes to stuff. So I got a carton of that, and then I'm also going to add in one can of chicken broth. Okay. And that's going to add a little extra flavor to our broth, just a different flavor that will will uh, taste pretty delicious right. in there. Chicken and beef broth. Chicken and yeah. beef, yeah. Okay. It's a nice rich flavor together. You don't really taste either or. Mm -hmm. uh, and our meatballs have pork in them, so we're getting all the meats in here, well, right? All of them, we're just yeah. not adding fish, no mm -hmm. worries. Uh, so anyways, you got that there as my broth. I'm going to add some stuff to it to help it with flavor. Tomato paste. A little paste. can of tomato paste. Mm -hmm. And we'll just drop that on in. And right. uh, tomato paste is very rich, very thick. It uh, thickens things up for sure. It does, add and that it adds in. good tomato flavor to it there. So let me get that mm -hmm. last little chunk out. Uh, then, of course, we're also going to add some marinara sauce to it. About a half cup, but when it comes to crock pot, okay. what's the best way? Just pour some in, right? Yeah. Let that slide in on the side. Pour to your taste. That looks good there, yeah. Okay. You're not going to go wrong by having a little extra marinara And once sauce. you get this, you'll stir. You may decide you want to add a little you, you more definitely for can. the thickness or whatever. Then i add some seasonings, some okay. basil and oregano. Okay. We'll just give this a light little mix here. All right. Let that mix on in. This is going to go directly on top of our crock pot here okay. once we've got it nice and mixed up. So that All looks right. pretty good. So carrots on the bottom, then the meatballs. And then this broth right here. So I'll okay. slide this on over and pour that right on top. 
And if you decide you want a little extra broth, go for it. You can add some in. Notice that I still had some chunks of tomato paste. That's totally fine. Once, Once that heat up, gets going, Once it'll it be all right. Up, it's going to be just fine. Yeah. To take care of that there. So we got that in there. Now we're going to cook it low and slow for about four to six hours. Okay. Uh, check it, stir it maybe once in a while to make sure the meatballs aren't, aren't burning or whatnot, mm -hmm. especially if they're not totally covered. But you'll be just fine with that. About 10 to 15 minutes before we're ready to serve, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to have some Italian vegetables, Ooh. and we're going to heat those up, prepare them according to the bag, steam okay. them a little bit, All right. and drop them in the crock pot. And of course, I'm going to add a bunch of spinach. spinach. To it too. <laughs> we're going to mix that in to add some nice hearty vegetables to our soup and uh, have it ready then. And then the soup will be ready in about 15 minutes. The spinach gets cooked down a little okay. bit. The vegetables are all softened up in there. You've got a hidden ingredient over here that we're going to do yeah, at the yeah. very end, which oh, is yeah. some pasta. I tell you what, so we'll let this finish up, come back and put it all together. Sounds After good. the break, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Our soup's ready to go. Here it is. Here's meatball soup. Looks delicious, right? You can start. You can make the meatballs yourself or go get frozen. Absolutely. Now, one thing I want to mention, too, is mm -hmm. I've also got a plate of pasta here. Mm -hmm. You can buy the 60-second instant pasta. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to put some soup on top of here just as a nice addition, a little bit of a... And you've got a real meal when you add that pasta in there. Oh, this, absolutely. Of course, we'll put this recipe for the meatball soup on the Mid-Morning Facebook page along with the other soups. This happens to be our last soup it of is. 2019, it right? It is. And we're going to have some good stuff in 2020 for y'all. For sure. So go to the Facebook page, get all the recipes. We'll see you tomorrow. The following is a paid advertisement. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of WCBI.